So with that, I'll get started. Our first talk is from Holger Dunnenberg from Boston University. And his talk is titled, Neural Dynamics Underlying Coding of Location and Running Speed in the Medial Entorhinal Cortex. So the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Adam, uh, uh, for the introduction. And thank you very much for having me here. It's, it's great. Um, so um, yeah, as you said, my, uh, the title of my talk is Neural Dynamics Underlying the Coding of Location and Running Speed in the Medial Entorhinal uh, Cortex. And uh, before I start, I, I first want to thank um, all uh, current and uh, past members uh, of the Hasselmo Lab at the Center for Systems Neuroscience at Boston University, where I'm a postdoc, and, and of course, also the funding institutions that support uh, our research, uh, in particular, the National Institutes of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. Um, so let me start my talk with a simple thought experiment. Uh, imagine an animal more or less randomly foraging in an environment on the search for food. Uh, once the animal has uh, found a piece of food, it often wants to return to its shelter uh, to consume the food in a safe location. Uh, and the animal can do so, and it can do so by taking uh, the fastest route possible, even if it has never taken that uh, route before. And a key question is now how internal self-motion cues are integrated with external sensory cues uh, to form a cognitive map of the environment uh, for, for the purpose of memory-guided uh, spatial navigation. And decades of research has shown that the hippocampal formation is central uh, to the formation of a cognitive map. Uh, the activity of neurons in the hippocampal formation is uh, temporarily organized. Uh, for example, by theta rhythmic oscillations. Uh, theta refers to a frequency range between six and 10 Hertz, and is often referred to as the online state of the brain. And importantly, theta rhythmic activity depends on uh, the medial septum and, diagonal, and the diag diagonal band of Broca, uh, which is a brain region in the uh, basal forebrain. So in the following 10 minutes, uh, I will first present data on the coding of location and running speed in the medial entorhinal cortex. And then the second part, uh, in the second part, I will uh, then examine the role of uh, medial septum inputs for the coding of running speed. Uh, and in the last part, I will then present data on the effects of visual cues on neural dynamics uh, for the coding of location and running speed as a function of time. So uh, all the experiments I'm presenting today uh, were performed in freely foraging mice uh, that carried a light fiber uh, for optogenetic manipulation of neurons in the medial septum and uh, tetrodes for multiple single unit recordings uh, and also recording of local field potential activity in a medial entorhinal cortex. So let me start with a short introduction to grid cells uh, grid cells in the medial entorhinal cortex have been hypothesized to provide a metric for space. And uh, grid cells uh, fire at multiple locations that uh, fall on the vertices of equilateral triangles, uh, thus kind of forming a hexagonal grid spanning uh, the environment. Uh, in most computational models of uh, grid cells, grid cell firing is updated by integrating a velocity signal. And in this talk, I will focus on the nature of the speed signal uh, in the medial entorhinal cortex. So current grid cell models rely on a linear running speed signal. And uh, the existence of linearly tuned speed cells in the entorhinal cortex uh, seems to fill that gap. Uh, however, many speed tuning curves are better fit by a saturating exponential function as shown on the right side, uh, as opposed to a linear function. Uh, and moreover, speed tuning curves uh, do not allow conclusions about the time scale of firing rate modulation. Uh, so what do I mean by the time scale of firing rate modulation? Well, a firing rate is uh, not a physical property of the spike train, uh, but it is derived by integrating spikes over time. This raises a very important question, namely, uh, which time window should be, uh, should be used for the computation of a firing rate signal? And I want to illustrate that here with an example. In the upper panel, a short time window is taken to compute a firing rate. As a result of uh, using such a short integration time window, uh, the firing rate shows fast changes over time and appears very variable. In the lower panel, a longer time window is taken, uh, and that results in slower changes in the firing rate signal. 
And importantly, the underlying spike, spike trade is uh, exactly the same in both cases. This raises the question, of course, which firing rate signal is most useful for the brain? Uh, and uh, we cannot know the answer uh, a priori. So in order to address that question, we computed the firing rates of enterrhinal speed cells uh, using different integration time windows ranging from as short as 125 milliseconds to as long as over a minute. And uh, what we found is that the integration time window that maximizes the speed score, uh, that is the correlation between firing rate and running speed uh, was in the range of seconds, uh, namely about three seconds in reds and 12 seconds uh, in mice. So this finding has implications for covered models of good cell firing. Uh, because if the speed code by firing rate uh, requires integration over seconds, the question is what happens to the regular hexagonal firing patterns of grid cells? And we tested it by using a model of grid cells um, and feeding in speed information uh, to this model. As you can see in the panels on the right side of the figure, uh, the spatial periodicity of good cell firing was largely disrupted uh, when running speed information was integrated over time windows larger than uh, 200 milliseconds. And uh, this data indicates that good cells may use uh, actually another speed signal. And one alternate speed signal in the hippocampus and entorhinal cortex is uh, an oscillatory signal by theta oscillations. Uh, in particular, the uh, local field potential theta frequency increases uh, with running speed as uh, shown in the white panel. So previous experiments have shown that both theta oscillations and grid cell firing depend on medial septal inputs. Since grid cells may integrate running speed information, uh, we tested the hypothesis that the medial septum is important for conveying speed signal uh, to the entorhinal cortex. In order to test this, uh, we optogenetically inactivated neurons in the medial septum by expressing the inhibitory opsin arshirodopsin T, uh, which is a light activated inhibitory proton pump and simultaneously recorded uh, LFP uh, uh, signals and speed cells in the medial entorhinal cortex. So these experiments were performed in uh, freely foraging mice doing alternating epochs of a baseline and optogenetic inhibition of medial septal neurons. And uh, by this, we, we demonstrated that optogenetic inhibition of medial septal neurons largely reduced theta oscillations in the entorhinal cortex. So the uh, figure in the middle uh, shows a time frequency plot where the frequency of local field potential oscillations is plotted on the y-axis uh, and the time is plotted on the x-axis. The power of theta oscillations is color coded with uh, red colors indicating high power and blue colors indicating uh, low power. And uh, you can see that uh, the theta oscillatory power um, almost instantaneously decreases at the start of the laser stimulation for optogenetic inhibition. Uh, and then theta power returns to baseline uh, levels after the end of the laser stimulation. Uh, on the very white right side, you can see that the slope of the local field potential theta frequency versus running speed relationship is uh, also reduced uh, during inhibition of uh, medial septal activity. And uh, taken together, uh, this data demonstrate that the medial septum uh, is important uh, for, for a potential oscillatory uh, speed signal. Uh, but is the medial septum also required for a speed signal by firing rate? Uh, so to answer this question, uh, we compared the distribution of speed scores between inhibition and baseline conditions. Uh, the speed score uh, measures the correlation between firing rate and uh, running speed. And uh, we found that the modulation of speed cells firing rates remained unchanged uh, on the population as well as on the single cell level. And these data show that the firing rate modulation of enterhinal speed cells uh, does not depend on medial septum inputs uh, and indicates that the brainstem pathway uh, via the medial septum uh, may not be the primary influence on the speed signal uh, by firing rate. So one alternate way to estimate running speed uh, is uh, the use of vision, uh, in particular, the use of static visual cues or optic flow. Uh, previous studies have shown that visual inputs are important for good cell firing, and a key question is how visual inputs are integrated in the coding of cell location. Uh, we therefore uh, next examined the world of visual inputs for the coding of running speed and uh, grid cell firing 
uh, in the medial entorhinal cortex. Uh, so how do changes in visual inputs affect uh, speed signals and good cell firing? Uh, to answer this question, we recorded signal unit activity in mice that uh, randomly foraged in an open field environment during alternating uh, light and dark conditions. And uh, we observed uh, large changes in the firing rates of many neurons, uh, including speed cells. And as you can see on the left panels, uh, those changes in firing rates during darkness uh, resulted in changes in the slopes of the speed tuning curves. Um, but then the white panels show the same data uh, after normalization of speed tuning curves within conditions. And as you can see, the normalized speed tuning curves now look very similar across light and dark conditions. And uh, normalizing firing rates within conditions uh, uh, therefore demonstrates that uh, those changes in the slope of speed tuning curves as seen on the left side uh, can be actually fully explained by the changes uh, in mean firing rates of neurons. Uh, conversely, the uh, running speed dependent gain in firing rates of speed cells is, uh, is not changed during darkness. So we next examined if the uh, proposed oscillatory speed signal by uh, local field potential theta uh, is changed during darkness. And we found that the slope in the theta frequency versus running speed relationship is, uh, was reduced in uh, darkness. Uh, previous data uh, have shown that uh, visual inputs uh, sharpen the grid cell metric. And uh, we found uh, also that the spatial stability of grid cell firing was uh, indeed reduced in darkness, uh, but the spacing of grid fields was largely preserved. Uh, so grid cells are important for spatial memory. And uh, this raises uh, the question, what is the time course uh, of those changes in grid cell stability uh, after changes in visual inputs. And so we uh, analyzed good cell stability as a function of time. And by doing that, we could demonstrate that changes in good cell stability uh, show a fast and a slow component of change after transitioning uh, between light and dark conditions. And uh, this suggests that good cells integrate velocity signals uh, over time. And intriguingly, uh, as you can see on the, on the right side, uh, the time course of changes in grid cell stability uh, almost perfectly aligned with the time course of changes in the local field potential uh, theta frequency versus running speed relationship. Um, and consequently, uh, uh, the spatial stability of grid cells was, was highly correlated with the slope of the local field potential versus running speed relationship, uh, which, which we could interpret uh, as, a, as, a, as an oscillatory speed signal. So uh, taken together, uh, these data indicate a link uh, between the speed modulation of uh, local field potential theta frequency and uh, the stability of, of grid cell firing. Uh, so to summarize all of that, um, uh, in the first part, I, I hope I could uh, convince you that the speed signal by firing rate uh, becomes optimal at seconds long time scales. And then I've demonstrated that optogenetic inactivation of medial septum inputs uh, reduce theta oscillations in the medial entorhinal cortex, uh, as well as the slope in the theta frequency versus running speed uh, relationship. Uh, but at the same time, uh, medial septum inactivation did not alter the speed signal by firing rate. And then in my last part, uh, I showed that grid side firing is maintained in darkness, uh, but with it real with uh, reduced stability uh, resulting in larger grid fields. And uh, this change in stability showed a slow component of change and uh, was strongly correlated in time to, uh, to changes in the slope of the uh, local field potential theta frequency versus running speed uh, relationship. Uh, so with this, I yeah, want to end my talk and, and uh, I'm looking forward to questions uh, uh, if there are any, thank you very much. All right, great. That was a really fantastic talk. Uh, very impressive work. Um, Emily Ari Jones has posted uh, two links to uh, the papers that were discussed um, in the chat. So thank you for doing that. Uh, Balash has asked a question. Did you investigate the time scale of theta frequency coding of running speed? Uh, not yet, not yet. Um, so I, it's currently on my list of doing that. So that's also very important. Um, but what I can say is that, uh, you know, from looking at the data, um, that it's actually very, it, it seems to be that it's 
more more similar actually to the timescales of the firing rate coding. So, um, I, you know, you might think that the coding by theta frequency might actually be faster because, you know, you have that potential. Uh, but then you also still have a lot of variability. So um, a lot of studies, you know, like average theta frequency over time uh, or over trials and so on. So, so a lot of that, you know, short time scale variability is often smoothed out. And so we have to see if it's really uh, really, you know, in the time scale of like 250 milliseconds or so, you know, we're in our grid cell model, the grid cells were breaking down. Uh, yeah, so we, so the analysis is still outstanding, but but if I had to guess, I would actually say that it's not that fast. Interesting. That's yeah, that's really interesting. Um, if anyone has any other questions uh, for Holger, you can post them in the chat, um, and he'll be monitoring that. Um, Unfortunately, that's the only time that we have for questions from this talk, but thank you. It was really, uh, it was really outstanding. Um, our next talk is going to be from Joseph.